Hey everyone, Aaron Lovejoy here. No, that's wrong. And babe, you need to stop crying and sniffling because that's going to be in the video. Uh, I, so. The episode's over. It was a memorial episode. I don't. Okay. Nobody wants to hear crying girlfriend on the side. <laughs> oh yeah. You don't oh. know. Some people might like Some people that. might like that. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Anyway. Hey there, Shadows of Brimstone fans. Aaron Lovejoy here from Miniature Monthly. And I know what you're thinking. Aaron, you're looking good. And guess what? I'm feeling good. And why is that? Well, I just finished filming the Goliath Assembly Guide. That's right. And maybe we'll have a little bonus at the end, and I'll show you how to transform that base into the studio version that I did for Flying Frog. All right, are you ready to do this? Like a laser beam. Here we go. All right, the first thing we need to do is get these things off the sprue. So for that, I'm gonna be using these God Hands sprue cutters. Oh, look at how beautiful they are. Now remember, God Hands are super, super sharp, and um, so they tend to crack, break off. See, the tip of mine is broken off, but you know what, they still work pretty good. I love them. These are a great sprue cutter. But if you don't have God Hands, just any old pair of sprue cutters will work. The next thing we're gonna look at is our cutting implements, and for this, Hey, if you're a little kid, yeah, that's right, I'm talking to you. If you're a little kid, do not do this part at home. <laughs> if, if you need knives and stuff, get your parents' help, um, have them do it. Now, if you're an adult and you're like me and you're a bit clumsy with uh, sharp pokey tools, maybe get yourself a friend, have them come do it for you. That being said, here's the tools that I use. So I use an X-Acto knife with a rounded curved blade. Um, this works great for like if you got a robe or something that's curved, a curved surface, you can get in there and scrape those mold lines off. Um, I also use a straight, straight edged uh, X-Acto blade as well. And this is great for scraping off mold lines, cutting off uh, nubs, whatever you need. The next thing I have is my scalpel, and if you notice, it has a very tiny blade, and it's also curved as well, so it can get you into tight little areas. Um, it's very sharp, so be very careful. Uh, this blade is very good for scraping off mold lines. My next tool is the file. This is probably the safest tool out of all of them, um, yet I still see it find time to poke myself with it. <laughs> uh, this file is great. They come in all different shapes and sizes. This particular one is the one I like to use the most. It's got a flat side and it's also got a beveled edge. Um, and this is great for getting in just about any kind of shape that you need on your model and filing off that mold line and getting everything spick and span. All right, are you ready to do this? Let's get these models off their sprue. Be sure to take a good look at all the pieces and don't just clip kind of willy nilly because you might have areas that uh, aren't supposed to be cut off. And you got, like right here, that's a key that goes into the next piece. Don't clip it off right there at the base, clip it off up here. So it's taking a little bit of time. I hear a lot of people online and they talk about, oh, I clipped a foot off or whatever. Don't do that. Take your time, figure out where the parts are they need to come off and make one cut. All right, once everything's clipped off, move that out of the way. Take a look at your sprue. Is there anything left on the sprue? If not, put it to the side. I always save my sprues until after I've actually assembled the entire model. That way, if for some reason I'm missing a part, I can go back to the original sprue and take a look at it again. Um, I like to do a quick little dry fit. Cool. And these parts go on somehow. I think it goes right here. No, just kidding. Um, that part goes right there. This part over here. It's kind of cool. It's got one leg piece. Again, I think these newer, the newer kit uh, is much better in the assembly phase. For sure. Aside from the gorgeous sculpt. Right, that goes there. This goes up here. So sweet. 
Oh, he already, I'm getting chills. He already looks cool. All right. Okay. So first step, you're going to have to clean all those little nubs off. There's little pieces. When you use your sprue cutter, there's little pieces like right here that need to get cut off. Sometimes there's pieces in between parts like right here. See how that nub kind of sticks out into the middle part? If we try to put his leg on before cleaning that, sometimes it makes it so it doesn't fit all the way down. So that being said, we want to get all those off. At the very least, if all you do in the cleanup phase is that, that's good. All right, so uh, go ahead, work your way around the models. There's usually between, you know, two and four or five of these tabs. Um, get them off all those tentacles. You want to get uh, even these end pieces that go inside the model. You want to get the tabs off of those as well because you don't want anything impeding um, your uh, model from being put together correctly. <laughs> Okay, so if your goal in life is to get these models off the sprue and get them onto the gaming table as quickly as possible, you don't care about painting them, you don't care about any of the other stuff, the next step is for you. But if you're looking to do a little bit more and you wanna have really nice models, you wanna do some mold line removal, some gap filling, all that stuff, uh, don't glue your models together just yet. Wait for the rest of the video. In this particular kit, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces. So uh, if you don't have nine pieces, you threw one away or you need to go check that sprue. All right, it's time to start gluing stuff together. I've got my Insta set, I've got my super glue. I've got a paper towel to take off any super glue that kind of bulges out. And uh, let's get started putting this guy together. I'm gonna start with the easy stuff first. Well, everything's easy, but I'm gonna do this lower leg. Squeeze that in there. I like how it sticks, kind of. And then what I want to do is I want to put it on his base. No way we know everything fits the way I've glued it together. So everything does, that's perfect. Um, you can see a little bit of glue peeking through down here. Right. Use my Insta set. Whammo. I'm going to get this head. So I'm going to pour a little bit of glue down in these the peg holes. I'm going to also put a little bit of glue all the way around the edge. Try not to get too much on there. But if anything squeezes out, we can just use our paper towel here and wipe away any excess glue. We're going to do inside the mouth, even though those tentacles are going to be coming out of the mouth. I don't want a big old bubble of glue there that I have to scrape off later. If the tentacles don't fit. All right, so we'll do his arms. So this is the smaller triangle shaped one. Goes like this. If you're wondering the orientation, a uh, good way to remember is this flat spot on the tentacle with the suckers is on the lower side of the arm. So let's marry those two together. You know what? I'm gonna hold up a second because that, that joint is really tight right there. So let me wipe off some of this super glue. Wipe all of it off there. I need to bevel the edges of this section. So we'll get up nice and close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little trough for the putty to sit in. Because I'm gonna wanna uh, gap fill this thing and since those gaps were really, really tight on there, 
really, really fine. Um, it's going to be hard for the putty to sit in there. It's going to be hard for me to, to get it to stick in there well. And if I'm going to file and stuff later, it just makes life a heck of a lot easier if I do it this way. So I'll cut little bevels around the outside edge of that. I'm also going to bevel the outside edge of this. This side will be a little bit easier to do. If you don't have a file, you could always use your knife. But this is much easier. You don't need a huge gap there. Let's fit this in here and just see what it looks like. Get all that plastic off. A little bit more. Now I have a little bit bigger gap there, and that will accept my uh, putty better. Now, if you're not filling your gaps, don't do that, because then you'll have huge gaps. It's kind of nice that those pieces fit together so well. For the people that don't want to fill the gaps, it's perfect. On this side, Definitely want to do that gap again. Oh, hit the camera. I've got the camera down. Let me pipe it down. I also like getting the mold lines off of these pins. That way everything fits really well together. Fit again, much larger gap. I like it, but you never heard anybody say that. Hey, these gaps are nice and big, but it's the truth. This guy's coming together really quick. Just like that. Perfect. I like, like how that th head fits on there. part that I think I will leave off for now is the tentacles because they will be so much easier to airbrush separate in the painting process 
even if you're painting by hand, it will probably be easier to paint these separate as well. So I'm going to glue the two halves together. But we won't stick them onto the actual model. And you see a little bit of glue out there. Bam, erased. Gone. This see how our test fit. Goes the other way. Alright. So the two tentacles flinging up is the top. Boom. Oh, I love that. That looks so freaking cool. Let's go down like that. Very cool. Base. How do I want him on the base? That's the front. Ish. Like this. That's good. Kind of maybe put it towards these back edges of the base. So the that thing almost hits the edge and this almost hits the edge. The wagon wheel's a little bit off. That gives us a little bit more room up here. Maybe I can play with some more dark stone right in here or something. I, I'll put something there. <laughs> The next step is cleaning off these mold lines. I use the side of my blade and I just scrape. I don't scrape super hard though. I don't want to take off too much. I just want to take off that pesky little mold line. If you wonder what the mold lines are, let's take a closer look. can actually see it on here. Runs down this ridge here, the lines right there. And that's basically where the two parts of the mold uh, meet and a little, you can also use a file. I use these beveled files. It's flat on one side, beveled on the top. And again, I'm not pushing real hard. I'm actually like, if I just laid it on there, it's kind of a little bit harder than that. I can I like this beveled file because I can get into areas that maybe I couldn't normally get into. And we just kind of file away those mold lines. Same with my knife. Another type of knife that's nice is one with a curved blade like this. And I can get right down into some of these areas that the maybe the the regular knife blade won't hit as well. Or if it's curved like this, I can get down in there. So it's really nice having these curved blades. And then once I get it primed, a lot of times any mold lines I've missed will show up at that point, um, which is always a bummer. But I find that you can still uh, do this scraping thing right over the primer, or you can use your file and get it perfect. These tentacles are, you're going to want to keep them very rounded. So whenever I shave the mold lines off them, I roll my knife around the circumference of it. That way I don't have flat spots on my tentacles. Or 
I'll try to avoid him. See, so yeah, I also constantly turn the model, getting these mold lines from different angles, both ways here. Probably what I'll do is I'll hit all these mold lines sort of lightly and then come back over it with my file. And, uh, file it real big. A lot of times I'll use the beveled side of it. One, because it goes in those curved areas nicely, but two, because it kind of keeps it everything rounded, where it's easier to that. And I don't know if you can hear it, but my stomach is growling. What the heck is going on? These rocks are wild. Um, some parts of the rocks, uh, the mold line is right at the bottom, and other parts it kind of creeps up here. So, just kind of got to be careful and look where that mold line is going. <laughs> Here we go. Um, now it's time to fill the gaps. And um, again, if this is something, if you just wanted to trim it and put it together, you're good to go. You don't need to do any of this. But for those of you who want to go a step further and get rid of all these gaps, um, fill that up and make it look pretty. Um, we are going to be using Abe's Epoxy Sculpt. It's a two-part putty. Um, I use the natural color. Um, roll it out into a couple little balls. Get a little portion from each. Try not to mix too much because if you mix too much of it, it ends up drying on you before you can get it in there. So I just usually mix up small amounts at a time. This is probably more than enough. And I just kind of fold it over on itself. Get that nice and mixed together. I like this stuff because once, once it's on there, it's sort of a gray color just like your model. And sometimes it doesn't even look like you did any gap filling. Um, it just looks perfect. So, get my glasses out. I've got my sculpting tool, which is a knife on one end and a spatula on the other. I've also got a uh, brush with kind of stiff bristles for smoothing it out. 
Um, one of the really cool things about uh, epoxy sculpt <clears throat> is it thins with water. So that means you can smooth it out with spit or water from your wet palette. Smooth that out. Um, it works really, really well. So what we're going to do is we're going to start filling these gaps. I'm just going to shove this down in here. I'm trying to do, I'm just not trying to make it perfect right now. I'm just trying to get pretty into the gap there. And uh, let me get a little bit closer, or a lot of bit closer. Move him out of the way. You can see exactly where that gap is and exactly where I'm squishing it. So one thing you'll find is as this putty gets older, and now we're talking by like 15 minutes older, um, it will start being less easy to get it into these gaps. So that's another reason why I always mix up just a little bit. I always have fairly fresh putty. So once I get that on like that, I can take my brush, and I actually brush it pretty vigorously. I don't want to brush it so hard that it actually takes the putty back out. But I want to I want to get it smooth, and this is something you can't do with most other putties. You can't do it with Procreate. You can't do it with green stuff. You can do it with Milliput. That works, but Milliput a lot of people are allergic to. So um, here at the shop we prefer Dave's epoxy sculpt. All right, do let me do some other parts, um, like his head up here. Let me get in or weird areas like this wrinkly skin right here. So I'm gonna push this in. This lower part on his neck. I'm kind of using, I'm getting a little bit on my tool like this, and I'm pushing it in and pulling back like that. So I'm just like scraping it into the crack. If we need a finer tool, we can always use our knife on the other side. Just kind of squeeze it in there as well. Pull off some of what we don't need. Back in areas I think we can use this spatula here. I really like I, I like all parts of the sculpting tool. You just find what works best in the in what situation and you go with it. Makes life a heck of a lot easier. Just keep working our way around. As you can see, this takes some time, but it doesn't take that much time. So for me, it's totally worth it, especially on these bigger models. They're just so stinking cool. And to have them look like they were just one big piece, you know, like people don't know that it was a model kit that you had to put together, I think is even more impressive. So um, if you're entering contests and stuff, uh, you definitely want to do this because you're going to get dinged for having gaps Gaps and mold lines are a big no-no in contests. Um, so if you're rocking the Brimstone Bounty or Miniature Monthly has a big contest every year that would give away $2,000 um, in prizes, and those types of contests, you're gonna want, they're gonna want you to have filled the gaps, clean those mold lines, and not just fill the gaps, but make it look like there was never a gap to begin with. So let's go ahead and get in this up like that. Right up here in the eyeball, you can see right there. There's a big gap that goes around. So you 
skin. I'm taking little bits of mil uh, epoxy sculpt and just kind of squeezing it in there. In between those teeth, I'm going to have to use my knife. And remember, this thing goes in right here. Maybe we just put it in. So you can see how it interacts there. That looks cool. We don't need to fill the gap under the inside of the teeth, so you really can't see that part. I'm gonna pull that off again. And just continue around this neck. Okay, we got that on. I'm gonna go ahead and smooth this out right now so I don't forget and then have to refile. Again, I'm kind of See, I'm just really mashing that brush in there. You want water on it, but you don't want a ton of water. So my sponge is actually pretty dried out, but it's still got some moisture in it, and that allows me to get a little bit of moisture on my brush. If you have too much, just have a paper towel ready and wipe it off. But in this case, I think we're doing pretty good with what we got. So on these flat areas, instead of brushing this way, which would maybe take some of that uh, epoxy sculpt out of the crack, I'm gonna go side to side. And that way, hopefully, it just evens it out right on top. Now, set him back on his base. We need to, don't forget that other side of this tentacle. I think for sure the face, that seam right down the middle, and this tentacle are two of the most important things to get the gaps filled on because it just looks really, like everyone looks at the tentacles. You know, they're like, that's the money. That's the business end of this dude. And then the face, obviously, we're going to look at, especially those eyes and stuff, since there's a, a gap running right through the eye, you want to get that fixed. But um, as you can see, this cleans up really, really well. All right, we got our gaps filled and we are ready to put a legit paint job on this Goliath. But you know what? I may have filmed a little bit more of how to... Uh, modify the Goliath base to look just like I did it for the studio version. And why is that? Because this is actually the studio version. All right, so if you wanna see how it's done, watch the rest of the video. All right, so here are the tools that we may or may not need for this video um, or for sculpting the base. To this video uh, we've got a couple different pliers uh, for applying stuff uh, we've got a sculpting tool with a little uh, sh uh, spatula on one end knife on the other I've got my exacto knife um, I have previously worked up a bunch of these little uh, you know, little pointy looking things they look like horns um, made out of milliput and also Aves Epoxy Sculpt. I've got some Aves Epoxy Sculpt for our basing and I've already rolled it out into little balls, roughly 50-50, um, and we should be good to go. Uh, we've got Goliath here on his base. I have not attached him because we still got to sculpt the base. Um, and I situated the base like this, glued the space topper on, and now we've got to fill in these other areas. We've got to make it look seamless like it was all one piece so pretty easy to do 
A um, couple things that I want to do. Uh, let me zoom in here real quick. And let me figure out how to zoom in here. Uh, the other thing I have on my he thing here is my wet palette, and it's a little bit damp. This is great because epoxy sculpt thins with water, so I can always dip my tool into the water a little bit and smooth things out if I need to, um, or if I don't want like something to stick for whatever reason, I can I can do that. Put my finger in there, rub it on like that. Um, it works really really good for smoothing out the Nella put. Um, the one thing that I want to do is they've added some little bitty dark stone shards. And I always, when I did the original um, box art for these things, um, I always added uh, dark stone shards to the enemies because I figured the big enemies, the big boss enemies, they would be guarding uh, you know, a whole bunch of dark stone. So that's what I did here as well. Um, I want to add more to that. So the question will be, do I want more dark stone coming out in the front of this? And it could be kind of angled out this way. Or do I want to put it in the back? And it would do something like sticking up in the air. This is obviously way too long, but I'm going to show you how to make a dark stone shard with this. Um, so that being said, we'll figure that out here in a second. I'm going to show you how to make a dark stone shard. And it all starts with making these teeny tiny little uh, horns. And whenever I have extra putty, I make a couple horns. Let them dry. And I'll take my, my X-Acto knife here. And what you want to do on the very first ones, we're going to cut flat sides. So anything that's like a gemstone shards, um, we'll have flat edges on it. That's kind of indicative of it being a gemstone. And I'm just going to cut these things off like this. Get my reading glasses on so I can actually see it. <laughs> um, that always helps. And I just want to be real careful and shave, shave that away. You want to be gentle. This stuff, Milliput and Abe's Epoxy Sculpt, is pretty, pretty strong. But it's not that strong. When you start getting these tiny little tips uh, that has a tendency to break off. Let me get that in more focus if I can. Like that. So get that first, those first little cuts there. And then after that, so the first one you cut this way towards the, the tip of the, the shard to make it flat little spots. From that point on, you always want to cut away from that. So what we're going to do is we're going to find where that flat edge ends and we're just going to kind of cut into the milliped a little bit and then break it off. See how I have a little cut there? And we're going to do that all the way around. Now the key to this is I don't want to end all of them in the same spot. This is a, this is a shard so it'll be all different angles. So this one maybe I'll go down much lower, a little bit lower and break it off. So now I have a, a shelf there and a shelf there. On the other side, maybe I only go, maybe I go really far. Maybe I go all like almost all the way down. The next one, I just go a little bit. The next one, maybe a little bit more. So sometimes if I if I move, if I kind of do a sawing motion with my knife, it will go down just a little bit. So now I've got some good little jagged angles there. I'm going to come down to this one. And just keep working my way around the model, making these jagged little shelves. All right, it's like that. And I'll take my clippers here. Clip that off. Now, if you notice here, I clipped it and there's a little bit of unsculpted area down here. That's okay, because that's what I'll bury down into the putty. Um, now, I made it, purposely made it kind of sharp on both sides of that piece. So I can come in here and create a second shard.
I don't want the tip to be flat like that, so I gotta just keep coming around, rehitting my angles, trying to make it pointy. And so I'll just be patient to the pointy edge to that to that tip. You could also, if you wanted to, put the file to it. File down a couple of these layers so that it actually gets a nice point on it. Perfect. If you want to go super quick mode for the first one, for the second one. third one this one that one ends right there so if you go further with this one oops and do a short one and that's it come into here And this, just be careful. You don't want to. You don't want to push so hard. You know, cutting down like this, that it breaks through, and then you stab yourself. <laughs> that would be bad. There we go. Now I just take a look at it. I might do another one right over here. Perfect. Now I got a shard. As you can see, I made a whole bunch of them and I did different sizes. So I've got the fatter ones, the shorter, skinny, long ones, short ones, really short ones. So now I have like a sort of a hodgepodge, a menagerie of dark stone shards. All right. So next thing I want to do, mix up my putty. It's roughly a 50-50 mix. <clears throat> Abe's Epoxy Sculpt is relatively inexpensive as far as putties go. And, well, it's one of the cheaper ones. And I like it because it thins in water. And that works great for gap filling. Um, you've seen that in my assembly videos, um, working to great effect. But it's also great for basing. And the reason for that is, is because it can be sanded and filed. I can cut things into dark stone shards. It works great. The alternative to this is a uh, milliput standard, um, but a lot of people are actually uh, uh, allergic to milliput, and so I, I like using the Aves Epoxy Sculpt. I figure one of these days I'm going to get allergic to milliput, and it's really weird. You break out in rashes and stuff. It's it's not the greatest thing ever, but um, milliput is a very good product for this as well. Um, the other thing that I have that I'll be adding to the bases is I've got little little bitty watch parts. So these little watch parts are really, really cool. Um, from all different kinds. So there's little brackets and stuff, and I'm gonna add that into the base to be like some old mine equipment. I've got some guns uh, that I got from Reaver Miniatures, and I put these on my bases all the time. You just wanna make sure that the mold lines are cleaned. I thought I cleaned it, but there's clearly a mold line right here on the bottom side of this gun. So I'm just gonna scrape that off real quick. So it's always neat to put little guns on your bases. Uh, I, I like to make my bases look lived in, like something has happened here before. And so uh, it's important to have those little elements. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add dirt. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna sculpt my own dirt because if you use uh, just regular uh, ballast or something, um, it's, it's out of scale, it's too big. Um, it's actually the size of large boulders and stuff or dirt, dirt clods or something like that. So I like to make sand in the appropriate scale for 28 millimeter miniatures. So I just sculpt it. It's very easy to do. Um, I put all this stuff on. I usually do little, little tufts of my putty like this, mash it in, but I don't get it super smooth. I don't want it to be super smooth. I want it to be kind of rough because that will add to my sand texture and look really cool in the end. Um, like that. If you notice, I'm, I'm squeezing it right up to the base itself, the sculpted base. And I 
in areas like with this little detail, I want it to be a little bit thinner. Whereas like on this rock right here, I can add maybe a little bit more. So it looks like the dirt has kind of partially submerging that rock. this all around I could come back in here You notice on the outer edges of the base, I always kind of push it down and bevel it to the side of the base so that I have thinner amount of putty out there. It looks like it just smoothly, very evenly hits the edge of the base. I don't like when, when my terrain kind of goes up, unless it's a stair step or something like that, that's different. But on something like this, I like it to, to kind of bevel into the edge of the base and just perfectly meet there. So I'm just going to squeeze some of this last little bits of putty down in here to kind of join between this rock and base. Just rip some of this stuff off. If you're ever wondering what that noise is, every once in a while in my videos, we have an air freshener in here and it just, it sounds like somebody's squeezing out a weird wet fart. Um, so anyway, now you know. All right, so we got that in there like that. I am going to, um, I need a sponge. So I've got these blister pack foams, um, or in this case, it was out of a monument, uh, go bag, uh, the pluck foam from a go bag. Um, and this stuff is great for making push real hard. It makes a sand texture. You see how I've got this weird texture, like multi texture in there because I put the putty on real rough and I smooth it out. It in this, when I, when I push it down with this, it kind of flattens it, but it also gives a really cool texture. So I'm going to texturize this real quick on these areas where I can't get it in there. I'm going to stick the sponge on, push it in with my sculpting tool in here. Perfect. So now a nice little sand texture in there. And now I can take, I've got some needle nose pliers and I am going to grab some of our little bits here and just to kind of accent the piece a little bit. I think this piece will look really cool up against these rocks. I may have to come back in later. I probably will have to come back in later and, and re-glue this, like super glue it on there. But for now, I'll just squish it into the putty and let that dry like that. Okay. This piece 
piece right here. Maybe it'll come out in the front. Actually, let's use all those flat head. These pliers are great because they're flat. You can take one from each side and bend this metal bracket. Maybe I'll bend it a little bit at the top. This side as well. Maybe this was a piece off the mine cart or a lift or something. Now we've got it bent up. Bring the base back. And I'm going to put this right over here. Oh, that looks cool. We have that piece and we've got our gun and I think the gun I want this to be like a little Easter egg on the back of the, the base um, so a little surprise maybe I'm gonna put it back here ah. I always want to lay it on there and see what kind of is the best direction for these things and this I want to have been sitting here for a while I'm going to push it down into my sand that I just sculpted. So the other thing I really like about sculpting my own sand is I can then push items into it and it looks like they've been there for a while. Like it's a little partially buried in there. Now we're going to start adding dark stone. I think I want to have a few more shards coming out of the front here. So what I need for that, I'm going to take some more of my putty. I'm going to make a little mound. Just a little man. All right, I swear to God, I'm not going to break into song. Um, let's put it right here. So a little mound of dirt. We're going to hit that with our texturizing tool again. Boom, boom, boom. Perfect. And then I'm going to start adding a few of these little dark stone shards. So um, actually, I want the bottom of this to blend in better. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to push it down and blend it into the bottom. Use my sculpting tool here. I don't ever like there, it to look like there was putty there. Like, I want everything to be smoothed in as far as that goes. All right, that looks much better. It's a little mound of dirt. And start grabbing these, our dark stone shards. Oops. I don't wanna put, I wanna put smaller ones in here. I don't wanna have them all angled forward. This is the part of the video where I start dropping dark stone shards, like dropping them right at the top. Um, This is Goliath. He's one of the original beasts, so we're going to give him a pretty good helping of dark stone shards. Um, grab a couple more. This is a longer one, so it can fit right over here. And let's do another short one. short one Just in the front. I think probably it would be a good idea to have like a rock or two um, here as well just to kind of disguise the the bottom part of those shards so I'm gonna drop a little wad of putty in there Turn this over 
And what's funny is before this all, before the putty dries, um, the pieces will not feel like they're super well s uh, set in there. Um, they, they're not going to stick very well. But once that putty dries, it's going to stick really well. So um, you just kind of got to be patient. Maybe I'll come in and kind of coax in that putty a little bit better around these shards. It's okay if there's little gaps around there, but okay, so we got that. We've got one rock. Let's make maybe one or two more. I want to have a really small one. So, yeah, I had a. When I first started, I had a tendency to always make big rocks, but then I found the beauty in smaller rocks. And I'm going to have like lots of little things all around here. So, put a small rock in right there, push this dark stone shard down right on top of it, and then that'll give it another anchor point. That looks cool. And then we'll put. We'll put a rock right in the back here. Now there's some smaller dark stone things there. We're going to be covering up a couple of those, but you know what? That's okay. Sometimes you cover up what you love. And I love dark stone. I do. I really, really do. All right, so rock there, and then maybe let's do one more biggish rock over here. So you want to you wanna stay away, steer clear from having things too ordered. So like I have a big rock, small rock. I'm not going to do a big rock, small rock again because that starts looking like a pattern. And you don't want that. So I'm just going to do a big rock right here, push this dark stone right on top of it, and we're good to go. Now we've got this piece fell off. I didn't even notice it falling off. So we're going to put it back on. See where it went right there and that rock actually kind of will hold it down too so maybe that is a blessing in disguise that this fell off when i put that rock on there and we'll squeeze that rock down a little bit right on top of that piece there so that will hopefully lock it in now i could come back in with a rock an actual rock and and stamp some texture into those rocks but I think they'll be okay as is I kind of put some flat facings on them a little bit so and I can paint more texture in there so I think I think that'll work out just fine um, how about that <coughs> coronavirus anyways um, now we're gonna put the big stash back here and I'm gonna need to mix up a little bit more of this putty Coffee break. Take a quick pot coffee break while I mix this putty. Dun dun dun. We're keeping it real here in the GA. The big GA. That stands for Georgia. So we need a putty base in here for our dark stone. Um, like that. Fill that up a little bit. Push it into the original putty. Okay, we can make a couple little wads. Maybe not too funky. Be my sand texture. Boom. Grab the 
this one was way too long. I'm gonna clip it off. Now here's the other thing. You're not stuck with the size that all these things are. We can make them, we obviously can't make them bigger, but we can make them smaller for sure. So, put that there. Just remember also, <laughs> you're gonna have to paint all this stuff. So um, don't put so many shards in. I'm like telling myself here, don't put so many shards in that, you know, it takes a ton of time painting. Unless, of course, you are entering this in the Brimstone Banny or something at Gen Con in a contest somewhere, and you want to really impress people with your gemstone painting abilities. In which case, put a ton of these dark or shards in, and it will look really cool. Um, that right there. like a throne of dark stone um, from the Game of Thrones. Except they're not swords and we don't have a throne. Other than that, it's exactly like it. Nice. There. So I put those all in there like that. I'm going to add the Goliath back on and let's move this camera back so that's like the money shot right there that's like probably how I'll photograph it for the studio maybe like that is that. so that being said These things all can kind of angle out that way. Maybe the back ones. This is called angle theming your dark stone. <laughs> Something like that. Maybe it all grows in the same direction or whatever. I don't know. Let's not overthink it. I don't know. Oh my gosh, this is where we delve into the ridiculousness of my OCD on which direction these shards should all face. Turn that down. I kind of like that better. It's almost like maybe it's just this really long one right here. Pull that out. Clip it down. I think the long one was throwing things off. So, that being said, now I have a gaping hole in there. I'll shove some little putty in. Oops, I forgot my rock was uh, sculpted. Oops. Maybe this front one is kind of like a little ring of little bitty shards. Put one more behind that. Keep knocking this thing up. I gotta quit fiddling with this. So there's a certain point on the base where you just gotta say, you know what? This thing is done, baby. Done, done, done. I think that looks pretty good. I like it. Um, let's see if I want to add any more rocks to the back. I think it would be a good idea, like at the base of those shards. Again, we're just trying to do a little bit of cover up here and there. I'm going to put one out on the outside edge. I'm going to make it a little flatter. It's a lower stone. And 
the teeny tiny one. It's funny, the shards don't look like much of anything until you start putting a big bunch of them together. And then they really start looking cool. So I'm digging how that looks. I think I want a teeny tiny rock over here um, between the wagon wheel and the dark stone shard over here. That's pretty good. Then I'm going to push that dark stone shard up and I'm going to put a rock under it for support. And this is for the actual studio model. So, you know, it's, it's never going to get played with. Um, if you are playing with yours, which I will be playing with my real one um, or my my home one, um, I still want to put these dark stone and stuff in there to make it look cool. But I'm definitely going to want to put things in there that will stabilize my my shards so they're not breaking off all the time because that's a major pain in the butt. So let's get in a little closer again. I dropped that rock literally in the perfect spot. That's exactly where I wanted it to fall. So a lot of putty, I'm gonna push it down, push it up into the dark stone a little bit. I use the knife side of my blade here to get in there. There, that rock is perfectly around there. I think, I think we're good. I'm gonna put, oh, ooh, ooh, to further integrate this side of the base. I could do this forever. We could just keep going if you want. I don't, I don't care. Um, all right, drop that rock in. It did not fall in the perfect spot, so I'll move it over to where it is in the perfect spot. This one is actually on top of the barrel. So now it really is selling the fact that like we like people shouldn't know People shouldn't be able to tell where the uh, base topper ends and where you're sculpting or where your extra stuff began. So putting a rock right there, and I think I'm going to put a rock back here, and then that way, I've got I've got some sculpted elements on top of the plastic elements. It makes everything look like, I mean, that's just the way it was. Now you also actually know how how I did it, how I made the, the studio model look the way it did. So got that. I think I'm gonna put one more rock. This piece of metal's been here for a while. So there's a, a rock fell down and clink right on top of it. Maybe it's like a flatter rock. 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 I almost said flat earth. It's a flat earth rock. All right, folks. Well, that's it. You've uh, learned how to assemble your Goliath. You've learned how to make the base super cool. Now you just need to learn how to paint them. And you can do that by heading on over to Miniature Monthly's Patreon page. Uh, I've got links in the description below. They're in the description of all the descriptions of the of the assembly videos that I've done here for Flying Frog. We have three excellent artists. We do uh, three at least three videos a month um, with tutorials on painting all different sorts of things. True metallics, non-metallics, all that good stuff. Check it out if you like. We have a huge uh, online community in our Discord, um, which is really awesome. People helping other people out of paint. Um, you can post your Shadows of Brimstone stuff and get advice, all that cool stuff. So anyways, thank you again for watching this video. I hope it helped you. If you want to share it with a friend, feel free to do so. All right, until next time, go paint your Goliath. Just paint him. Do it. It's going to be awesome.